So tell me about going to the White House. You must have been the first dog to sleep in the Lincoln bedroom. That must have been so cool. Not so fast, Mr. Duggar. On February 11, 1861, my buddy Abe made a few parting words to all of us gathered at the Springfield train station as he headed to Washington to become the President of the United States. Here is how I remember that famous farewell speech. My friends, no one, not in my situation, can appreciate my feeling of sadness at this parting to this place and the kindness of these people and my dog Fido, I owe everything. Here I have lived a quarter of a century and have passed from a young to an old man. Here my children have been born and one is buried. I now leave not knowing when or whether ever I may return with a task before me greater than that which rested upon Washington Without the assistance of that divine being who ever attended him, I cannot succeed. With that assistance, I cannot fail. Oh, and Fido, can you meet up with Mrs. Lincoln behind the train station for one minute? Yep, thanks. You see, Abraham's wife, Mary Lincoln. Well, she wasn't exactly a member of the Fido fan club. She was constantly annoyed that Abe allowed me into the house and the attention that he gave me, and so much ado about my muddy paws. Mary would complain that I would jump up onto the beds, get up onto the curtains. For dog's sake, Duggar, the streets were made of mud. What was I supposed to do? Put on doggy booties? So right after the election of 1860, Mary wrote, and I quote this one directly from a source. The public will not tolerate a dog, even the president's dog, if that animal soils the White House carpets or damages the heritage furniture in that mansion. Those items are public property and are held in trust by the president and should not be despoiled by any animal. So Mr. Fido is not going to Washington. Oh, my dog! That must have crushed you! And sadly, I never felt the gentle touch of his large careful fingers on my furry back ever again.